general advance, uh, advice for people who uh, are passionate about technology, uh, remember that yeah, technology is not the goal. So, uh, hello everyone, and thank you um, uh, Vladislav to, for being with us today. Uh, so we are going to have a fire chat um, with Vladislav for around, uh, like around uh, up to like for 40 minutes. And we'll be going around some questions uh, that, or some challenges that usually CTO face. So we're going to start uh, straight away. Um, so Vladislav, could you uh, present Revolut and uh, to you what makes it uh, like a unique, special company to you guys? I usually start with a question of uh, you know how many people have an account or know about Revolut, but I've seen already the reaction, so it's, I, I don't need to kind of go all the way back. Uh, but uh, maybe o overall, directly answering your question, uh, what makes uh, Revolut a special company is uh, number one is the the, the mission, the ambition uh, f to to become the global financial uh, platform, uh, and the people that kind of join around around that mission uh, that I would say the 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 unique part at least fr from my perspective uh, uh, I'm sure everyone would say something similar about their their company uh, and I think that that's that's normal thing it's just for everyone that's that mission that, that goal that uh, uh, unites people in the company in this startup uh, is will be unique for their specific case uh, and I think it's it's important just not to uh, with the uh, growth of the company, not to not to lose that. Uh, that's why I mean, we talk about incumbents and why startups appear because those other companies they just lose it at some point, right? And they start become very risk averse, very protective in what they have, etc. And people mindsets change, etc. So I think it's uh, super important to, to keep that mindset. Mm. Could you tell us uh, more uh, about yourself? What you do? What do you do at Revolut? What did you do before? Right. Um, at what do you do at Revolut? Uh, again, I'm a uh, founder. Uh, I become part of a lot of different things, initiatives. It's uh, uh, at current stage, it's, um, it's 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 changed a lot uh, when we grew compared to say, even a couple of years ago when we were I don't know, 500 people or less. Uh, these more processes, different communities, uh, as especially being in financial services, uh, the, the space is very regulated uh, and we don't have to deal just with one uh, regulation but with many operating in many different countries. So that kind of adds a lot of uh, additional complexity or problems, but like I will look at, okay, these are problems that need solutions and uh, I become part part of this different things uh, naturally in the company. Uh, my focus is primarily on product and uh, technology. So as CTO, I'm kind of the uh, technology uh, lead, lead technology for the whole organization. Uh, um, in terms of what I did before. Uh, uh, I always had uh, this idea. Uh, okay. to, to me, there was never a kind of separation of uh, you know, being entrepreneur and being a technologist. Like, I always thought it was like, if you have this, the combination, you know, you have curiosity, you have, uh, uh, you know, a mindset that you, you know, you see problem, you want to solve it, and then having uh, skills to be able actually to solve, to see how to solve it. That's like the a great combination, uh, which I think people often uh, miss when they just focus just on tech uh, and they forget why, why the tech exists. Uh, so uh, I think that before Revolut, I kind of did a lot of, uh, tried different things on, on my own, uh, not, not uh, to the success, <laughs> of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that was kind of, for me, it, was, uh, uh, it wasn't a, a huge transition in terms of, okay, I'm gonna start a company with someone. Uh, at some point, it was like uh, uh, maybe change uh, for me when I realized, okay, I don't have to do to work on my own idea. Like, I'm okay to you know 
join someone else uh, and work on the idea, make that happen, uh, right? If uh, if I uh, kind of share uh, th the same view on it, yeah. So you are um, um, taking all these tech product challenges and, and, and business challenges and, and trying to solve them. And uh, in the Revolut case, what unique tech challenge uh, did you face? Uh, if we talk about tech, uh, so here um, the challenge uh, currently uh, is slightly different. So before, uh, in earlier days, first years, there was uh, challenge was how to build fast, and now challenge is how to build fast at scale, and not to uh, you know and to, and to maintain and improve quality all the time. Uh, especially quality becomes like more and more uh, you know part, part of the agenda versus like early days when something just needs to done so it works and uh, we move on to the next thing. Uh, now there's a lot more thinking, uh, and th that brings challenges uh, you know, with growth organization. Uh, you know how to uh, define. Uh, you know if we talk about tech uh, engineering. Okay, how do we make engineers most productive? Right. And tech is like what tech is used for that. Uh, how you make the decisions about tech is, is, is important here. Like well, one uh, thing, uh, maybe as, as a challenge uh, I found in Revolut is like especially with, with growth with a lot of people, you know, like as an example, since last year we grew we more than doubled uh, people who to the product engineering. Uh, and this is a challenge from multiple aspects. Uh, you know, for people who are in the organization, kind of they realize, okay, we need to, you know, we have ambition. We need to build a lot of things. Okay, we need to hire more people. Right, so everyone has to participate in the hiring process. How do we make the process efficient? How do we make onboarding of people efficient? So a lot of new people come. You know, when you have uh, you know, more people. Uh, joining at some point, like over six months or so, than the way before in the company, like it's overwhelming for for, for some people. Right? It's like okay, all these people, like well, how do we make sure you know everyone comes with you know from different environments, you know their, their ideas as well. How do we make sure everyone still goes in the right direction, right? In in, in the same direction. So that that's a challenge, uh, and around tech as well, like people come with opinions, you know. Tech-minded uh, people, engineers, often have opinions, you know, uh, about uh, their preferences and stuff. Uh, so, what one of the uh, uh, cultural things uh, that I try, try kind of from early days to build is tech is just a tool, right? It's not, it's not the, the goal. Right? The, uh, we have problem-driven uh, approach. You know, we have our problems of our customers and problems of business, and that decides like. How, how, where we go and what, what we do. Uh, how we do it then is based on criteria, like how do we achieve this fastest, cheapest, right? And without uh, creating more problems. Like one, one important aspect is uh, people sometimes forget when they think they solve the problem, they forget to think about okay, what other new problems that new approach and new tech uh, creates, right? Uh, one of those typical problems is uh, complexity. Right? How, constantly keeping in mind not to uh, increase complexity. Uh, that's like something that we constantly have to work on uh, because anything complex is hard to scale. Right? So, as example, uh, maybe uh, you know, tech-specific example could be uh, you know, one engine. Uh, engin sometimes engineers come. The ideas, okay, when they become you know, uh, very passionate about a very, very specific tech that we currently don't use, and they just want to use it at any opportunity, right? And we had this uh, case with uh, GraphQL. It was like, it's, it's hyped very much, yeah. uh, but then there was no like way it was introduced. There wasn't enough thinking, okay, what actual problem it solves. Is that problem actually significant to go through all this, uh, you know, introducing complexity, rewriting things, etc.? So there was a kind of bit of a mistake where those individuals were left a little bit on, on their own. They they tried uh, kind of 
the result was so-so, <coughs> but there was uh, at least good learning that people who were involved and people who knew their work and other stuff, they realized, okay, next time they, they have to think about the impact of uh, introducing anything, anything new and actually uh, you know, does, does, it, does it solve actual problem or is it just because you know, my personal preference? So it's uh, this uh, bridge between uh, product, tech, and uh, how people like to uh, evolve around this, like it's a big topic in every startup. I know it's, uh, it's the case for mine. Um, if um, like many aspiring CTOs or early stage CTO, like as one like a few years back, I was always wondering, uh, okay, what is the daily routine of uh, like uh, a late stage startup CTO. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the answer is not very exciting. It's uh, it's a lot of meetings, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, for me. It's kind of I, I still haven't given up on that idea that uh, I still need to kind of find that those you know uh, windows of time where I could just go and focus on something and just solve them. Uh, problem, you know, just even look at the code, touch code, you know, do something versus explaining how to do it, uh, right? Uh, a, a lot of, uh, as I said, it's a lot of meetings around product, uh, making sure we're building the right thing. Cause now we have uh, dozens of teams uh, building uh, different parts of product, uh, and it's kind of it's we have it's routine as weekly routine with all teams. We go through what they're building, what, what's their roadmap, uh, do they have any problems, uh, how they're achieving that, uh, are they still achieving, uh, you know, w are they looking good in terms of achieving the you know, objectives that they set, that we call key KPIs uh, early on. Uh, so this is like probably the biggest part, uh, and it's like on different levels. On, Top level of the company, from the board executive uh, committees. Again, it's like we uh, heavily regulated business. We have few committees. We are not we're trying to kind of keep things uh, lightweight, to so that they again solve problems. Uh, like most of the time, solving organizational problems, and making sure that uh, we all, uh, as a company, focus on the right thing and uh, are productive. Uh, so, and as I said, meetings, meetings. <laughs> and do you still have uh, time to code? Uh, so this is, yeah, as I mentioned, it's not, uh, uh, I don't have much time to code. I still look uh, at the code quite a lot. Uh, I'm mostly looking at the code and uh, directly, because when it comes to special uh, discussing any problem with uh, engineers, code is the, the common language. Because trying to discuss something technical without uh, looking at the code, it just often ends up being people just have their own ideas about uh, about how they should work, and looking at the code hel helps a lot, yes. And um, like, um, I imagine that uh, with Revolut you had like different phases, one which was hypergrowth, and uh, which might have been very challenging, but if you take a look back and if you think about yourself like at the very beginning and during the different stages, up to this hypergrowth, what was like challenging for you? Uh, so, uh, you mean um, bef before we kind of went uh, on this ramp up? You know, like oh. you, you, you have your uh, company evolving, you have yeah. to evolve as well, there are different paths for you, and there are some that, are, might, that might be a bit harder than some others. Like, did you face some challenges, like uh, dilemmas? Uh, there's, there's a lot, uh, to be honest. Uh, and Kind of what, what happens, uh, at least in my case, uh, the transition from you know when early days of the company when there are very few people, very few people, uh, and everyone is like most of the time is an individual contributor, and it's just a very small group of people. The com communication is very efficient because you don't have to you know organize yourself that much. You sit all together next to each other. You can you know, discuss any problem at any point. Uh, adjusts at any point. You don't have to organize around that. Uh, you don't need to have processes. Uh, and then this model works until you know certain size. Then you start thinking, okay, one of the problems you start facing, 
it just breaks in communication. Because most of the time, why people are doing uh, wrong thing or, or result is not uh, you know what is expected is just purely because of you know some information was missed or misinterpreted somewhere. And it's important to build these communication channels uh, so that they're efficient. Uh, with growth, it's like different uh, kind of forms of this problem. Like f from early days, it's organizing. Uh, you know, at some point when you know, early on it was feature teams, and we started organizing into product teams, put some structure on that, uh, some roles. And then uh, product teams, it's it's not enough. It's at certain scale. It, it doesn't work anymore. Keeping everything purely uh, flat, uh, introducing new responsibilities to people, who is going to be responsible, how uh, hiring works, who can participate in hiring, how do we keep the bar high of that. Uh, uh, one thing that uh, I learned as well through all of this is delegating to people more and more of, of these things because uh, and at scale you, can, you just literally cannot do a lot of things. Uh, and uh, I mean, there are two approaches. One is okay, to automate if there is something that is you know, routine, it just has to happen. You try to find a way how to automate it, and you know, if you automate it, it can scale for a long time. But some things, uh, you know, they can be either very hard to automate, at, you know, it could take time and you need to solve the problem now. Then you have human process, right? And then you just have to distribute that. Uh, otherwise, again, like doing something centrally, uh, uh, I think what I'm, what I'm going to now is uh, I, I think a lot uh, about organizational structure and processes. You know, it's a very similar way to how I think about systems. It's just very much the same. Like how you solve as as a an engineer, how you solve uh, bottlenecks in your uh, systems. It's same same thinking applies to to human processes as well. I would say, yeah. like even sometimes explaining to engineers actually it helps. To put these analogies, you know, okay. Imagine your microservice architecture, right? Whatever. Uh, I'm just using a buzzword here, but uh, how that could work, right? What patterns you need to introduce, etc. Uh, and again, it's in systems. It's all about communication, right? Making that communication reliable, uh, uh, scalable, and then the same applies to people. Like, how do you make sure you know, everyone? knows what they need to know, uh, they can find that information easily, uh, they can communicate that information to others uh, efficiently, uh, just making the whole organization productive, essentially. So you were applying like uh, design patterns to human organizations? Uh, in, in a way, yes, yeah. Cool. And um, so I guess this is how you manage to face uh, your hyper growth, uh, your scale, and how did you engage with it? Like, was it something that, like, Came to you, but you anticipated. Uh, how did you? Yeah, how did you face it? I have uh, a suggestion. If I talk too generically, like, feel free to interrupt me and tell me, uh, you know, to give an example, because <laughs> uh, that would maybe uh, easier to bring it in context. Uh, so, uh, just once again, the question was. So, like, you have to, at some point, you are like 20 engineers, your feature mm -hmm. team still work, you are all on the same floor, so, like, communication is easy. But as you said, like, communication breaks uh, super easily as you grow the team. And um, so there are people that um, anticipate it, some people that learn it, like, the hard way. Mm -hmm. So how did you approach it? Like, did you, fa uh, did you know it already? Did you build your organization uh, straight from the very beginning so it can replicate, for instance? Okay. So, I mean, first of all, I, I never uh, went through this journey, growing like from nothing to, you know, uh, uh, to our, like our size organization. So it's kind of, there's a lot of learning, uh, but uh, my, my previous careers, like working for other companies, is most of the learnings were how not to do things versus how to do. Uh, unfortunately, there were good things I learned from some companies, uh, but uh, in big companies, you most of the time you unlearn stuff. Um, so here, uh, kind of the again the mindset like this is the thing I repeat probably every day many times to people: being problem driven. Right? 
being able to like this is where like the, the root of it the way it starts. If you can identify a problem well, you can define the problem well, you are halfway there already. Then finding solution becomes uh, a lot easier. Making sure that solution actually works is easier because you can validate because you know what you want, what you expect. Uh, that actually part of our uh, kind of uh, the official term is uh, change management policy, but uh, internally it's called real development process. Is uh, one of the key aspects is uh, what I call uh, expectation driven development. Like we have to have expectations first. We need to make sure we can challenge those expectations. Uh, we we're making sure that we we know where we're going before we start building it. So the, this kind of realization of importance of this came more and more with time, uh, especially when you start doing a lot of things. Uh, as I mentioned before, everything becomes more complex. Like not uh, losing direction is, is very important. Otherwise, things uh, important things like time to market like suffer a lot if you start just you know constantly you know spending time on things that are not important at all right? mm -hmm. or building solutions that actually don't solve the problem right? and what is your vision around management in tech in, in product management for instance yeah. your vision around uh, uh, management like a uh, career path for people for instance mm -hmm. Uh, well, maybe uh, I'll, I just realized uh, just an example of from previous question, right? How to uh, organize communication before I uh, switch to again more more generic vision. Uh, how many people use Slack to communicate internally? Uh, whose whose company is uh, bigger than two hundred people? Okay, you, you probably don't, don't uh, feel the pain uh, of of Slack yet. Uh, Slack came out you know, as a, an email killer, right? Uh, as uh, a lot of products like that came out. But in reality, like, it didn't kill email. Email is still there. Not just people don't have time anymore to organize their emails. Uh, f and there is Slack. And Slack is not the best place to keep structured information, and everyone wants to use Slack. Right? Oh, but it's instant messaging tool. And again, it's like it solves one problem really well. Sometimes people forget, and we went through this phase of you know, when a lot of communication went through Slack. I was like, okay, yeah. then people cannot find that information. They want to build some other things around Slack. It's like, and it all becomes clunky, lots of work runs. Okay, then we went to a stage that we needed to document things properly, use tools that you know that tools for instant exchange of information, and that's it's short lived like Slack, and the tools for short-lived information, something that's important that should stay maybe over months and years, right? And uh, there you apply some other things, like whatever that would be uh, your, what you use for your information management, uh, Confluence stack or something else. Uh, we, we use Con Confluence uh, products for this specifically. Uh, there was one decision we made as well not to, at some point, when people felt, oh, Trello is nicer to use. Maybe, it, at, to do things very fast in a hacky way, yeah. But then it went to a point people started being, building workarounds around that simple tool. Like, okay, we just killed it. It's just everyone just uses Jira. We figure out what is the best, you know, structure for most of projects. And this is again about uh, scaling processes with more people, so people don't have to invent this thing over and over again. Uh, uh, and then. Uh, in terms of uh, vision around uh, product you asked and uh, management. Uh, management. Yeah, management. Like, for instance, uh, you have the American way with like sole contributors and managers. You have the French way, more European way, which is like you begin as a sole contributor and then you become a manager. Like, what is your stance around it? Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of. Uh, uh, Kind of very narrow uh, definitions. Uh, I think it's important to it's important to have good definitions uh, for each role, but at the same time to have flexibility. So, uh, 
what, what is important is the, that goal that unites uh, people who defines what, what they, they're doing and then specific skills that are needed to, to achieve those goals, right? And uh, do you, kind of the, based on this idea, uh, how we organize, um, uh, in, in general, our organization structure works is we, uh, what do we call, we have two, two types of teams in general, product teams and service teams. So, and product teams is, it could be products that are used by our customers and or p internal products that are used internally. It's basically everything that, that we build ourselves. Uh, and those teams, uh, cross-functional teams, engineers, designers, whoever needs to be in the team, uh, depending on the type of product. Uh, if we're talking about customer facing same products, there will be people doing marketing, designers, uh, engineers, uh, there's always a uh, team lead as a product owner. Sometimes uh, uh, that people who are in product owner role, they can be strong in design specifically. They, their past experience is design and they would be contributing as designer potentially. Uh, could be technically heavy products like uh, different processing systems. Uh, we have like dozens of different in integrations for into uh, payment networks uh, into uh, card networks. Uh, those are technically heavy, like the, the kind of the closer to the core uh, network you you you, you go, uh, and they're mostly operations people and engineers. Uh, There's no need for designers there, uh, and this this kind of uh, approach uh, again based on the goal and purpose. Uh, defines the structure as well. We don't have this uh, typical for many tech, American special tech companies, where there's distinction between product and engineering, and then somehow they have to work together. Uh, and every time, because we interview a lot of people from companies like Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Google, uh, often hear this disconnect, uh, you know, engineers that don't know what why they're doing certain thing, because they just know there's a problem and they often just fiddle with some uh, code. Uh, and uh, product people, their struggle is also, okay, I need to, like, most of the time, navigate you know, the environment and try f to find the engineers and convince them to, to build this thing. Right? It's just like, okay, why, why? We, we, we try not to waste time on these kind of things. Uh, there's a goal, and whoever needs to needed to solve this problem is organized in the team. So you have um, product teams that are com composed of uh, like all the expertise that are needed for the kind of product that you're building. And how do you manage all these uh, roadmaps? Do you have like a general roadmap? Do you have like a roadmap for every sub team? Are you working with OKRs? How do you work with it? Uh, yeah, we, we tried OKRs uh, in early days when we tried to organize ourselves when we were like 20, 30 people. Uh, it was a big failure. <laughs> At that stage, uh, it took us probably uh, three weeks or so to realize like, okay, just don't bother about this like process that we don't even know how to apply. Uh, we just well, like said, Okay, problem was just solved and next, 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 without having an, any process eventually. And then we grew to having a structure where we have company goals, top level goals, that define uh, a general direction of what we want to achieve as a company. We want to launch in this specific markets, for instance. Whatever is required on different, uh, in different departments for this, uh, then contributes to it. Uh, or we want to increase uh, engagement of uh, uh, on our product side we want to increase our engagement from you know from x to x or we want to grow from x to y uh, so this would be a top level few top level goals and then uh, this communicated teams and each product team uh, who would contribute they would define in their area how they can, how what they need to do to contribute to that right not everything then contributes 100% always, like there are outliers and there are some unique problems that need to be solved and some teams will just focus on that. But m most of teams, they are aligned uh, around this uh, top level company goals. But the, it's teams who decide, so the process we have is um, uh, the 
KPIs first, which are uh, usually improvements around product and they are focused on solving, uh, you know, taking uh, literally metrics. Uh, you know. I said an example could be a number of daily active users of specific products, right? Or uh, if it's related to uh, something that generates issues, as, uh, would be a team working on customer experience and customer support systems, and their goal is to decrease uh, the number of tickets that come in, a uh, number of different ch charts that are initiated, uh, and they would define, okay, we want to take it from here to there, and then they will figure out how to get there. Uh, or they could focus at the same time on not just decreasing the number of those, but how long it takes to resolve those uh, tickets to make customer service more efficient, right? Uh, and they will be building solutions for that. And then they d decide, second stage, we kind of look through all those uh, ideas of KPIs, check if they're, they're ambitious enough, that they're feasible at the same time, uh, and then teams figure out how to ach achieve that, and they uh, decide what, what's going to be a, their roadmap to get there. Uh, and then this framework with KPIs allows them to assess, does it make sense to, to work on this thing? or not, it just becomes prioritization framework, essentially. Um, yeah, and then kind of we have weekly process of reviewing. Uh, so before we used to have uh, six months cadence. From this year, we introduced three months to have, uh, again, we, with the growth, we need to do more alignment. Uh, so we have three months, uh, so-called performance cycle. Uh, and uh, so in the beginning, we make sure we approve all the KPIs, uh, and it kind of cas cascades from top down, and then roadmap, and then the roadmap is kind of more flexible through the uh, kind of, as okay. teams go, they can change that. And how do you contribute as a CTO and co-founder to the company goals, uh, to uh, like the general roadmap? Uh, the, the easy answer is, uh, or simple answer is directly. <laughs> uh, uh, but, um, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, have you know, the, the company general direction, top-level goals, and as a CTO, again, naturally, because I was there from the very beginning, like I'm uh, part of, uh, I'm, I'm on the board, and I'm part of executive co committee, and we don't uh, have these decisions as well. it's not like a one-person decisions uh, in you know like early days to mostly Nick and myself, and we just decide what we're going to do next. Now it's being a group of people, uh, as executive committee, where we discuss what is important, what we're going to focus on. Uh, and then, as I said, and then cascades down uh, to all the teams. It's communicated, and they figure out how we're going to get there. So in terms of product, then uh, I, I uh, participate in all these uh, product reviews, as I said, it's like a routine thing that we do weekly with uh, all uh, different product uh, teams, uh, etc. Cool. And um, if there was one thing you would like, uh, like uh, younger CTOs or like technical co-founders to remember, um, uh, given all your past experiences, what would it be? I would say uh, f f general advance, uh, advice for people who uh, are passionate about technology. Uh, remember that uh, yeah, technology is not the goal. It's uh, uh, and uh, this is one thing that I've tried to explain always to engineers that join Revolution is uh, being an engineer. You are in a great position where you can think about problems, like coming up with ideas is, is a lot simpler in general, right? It's just, it's more about uh, attitudes, you know, the curiosity, etc. Sort of this kind of characteristics that don't require, a, a, you know, a skill per se. It's, uh, you can learn these things, but ideally you, you're naturally like this, right? Um, and then being an engineer allows you to come to, you know, realization what's possible. Right, or what's not possible, they should just, should just not do it because it's stupid, whatever, right? So, uh, so yeah, I would say this is advice just not to forget and being entrepreneurial, uh, uh, it's like 
it's a must if you want to achieve something. Uh, even if you're tech focused and you're solving a problem for techies, uh, or whatever it would be, uh, a, a, a build platform or you know uh, another SaaS solution for for engineering teams to be more productive, you still when you're focused on the goal, it's maybe more natural for you than to think about such problems without having experience, you know, because the, you have experience yourself. Uh, but uh, I would say just keep, keep the problem in mind, be problem driven all the time. And is this something that you would sell, uh, tell to your younger self? Or do you have like a different advice for yourself specifically? It's, uh, it's in these lines as well, uh, at the time I would tell not to uh, not to be a perfectionist in in uh, yeah, in uh, execution. Uh, sometimes getting to you know ninety ninety five percent uh, is often enough, uh, or sometimes even less. Versus you know trying to to bit more, bit more uh, without kind of having you know, the, the point where you just stop. Right? You have to to be specific. You often achieve goal. You need to have time frame for that as well. And my uh, last question, what is your relationship with your uh, final uh, product? How do you build it? Maybe through the company goals, maybe through the code you review? How is your uh, like personal relationship with it? Uh, personal relationship? Uh, one, one uh, my, maybe funny thing, uh, I use... Uh, a lot of people in the company laugh, laugh at me that I use this uh, cheap uh, Xperia phone. Uh, one of the reasons is because uh, I want to make sure that uh, our app works on these kind of phones. Uh, and what, what started happening is, well, different teams, they start purchasing specifically this device to make sure before they present something to me it works. Uh, but generally, yeah, I would fiddle a lot, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, whatever the uh, people get in their hands, uh, it, it works. Uh, this is on the, on the personal level. So I'm, I'm the, you know, Will always be, you know, one one of the you know top users of our product. Uh, I think it's a nice thing as well when uh, everyone in the company can, uh, which is easier in B two C space, uh, when people in the company uh, are uh, users of, of their own product. Uh, it makes you know uh, the whole problem about um, uh, motivation, etc., kind of naturally solved. Then. Thanks for your great uh, answers. Um, I think we can go to the Q&A. So Vlad. Yeah, so I'll give you this mic. So you start because you raise your hand first. And it's a catchable, throwable mic. So you can throw it to the next person, OK? And it's soft, so don't worry if it, it doesn't hurt. You ready? You start. <laughs> Hi, hello. Um, I had a question. What was uh, the biggest challenge you had to face at the very beginning when you start building the app? What is the biggest challenge in technology you had to face? I think for, for us at the time, the biggest ch uh, challenges were around the uh, around the domain itself, the space we uh, we operated, like we previously didn't have any experience in uh, retail consumer uh, financial uh, products. Uh, and there was a lot of learning from that perspective uh, about regulation, about crime. Uh, those were some big things that uh, like we, we had to learn really fast. Uh, like what, again, the more specific example was uh, around fraud specifically when we launched we didn't realize that uh, we were still in beta like we uh, onboarding just like bit by bit uh first users and at some point it was like oh nice we have so much activity uh so many transactions going through and it's like suddenly some something's odd about these transactions <laughs> it's like okay well, then we yeah realized it hit us and we had to think <laughs> really fast like to uh, you know, overnight to introduce some solutions to you know minimize that, and uh, you know, it took some time to uh, kill these problems. And you know, at the core, where you know it's so small, it's uh, it's kind of it, it's relevant. We don't put like crazy amount of resources into it. But these kind of problems, are learning this space itself, that for us was a challenge. Not technology per se it was 
uh, something we care a lot about solving the problem fast and you know about time to market uh, and that's why uh, from time to time we just okay the quality of whatever was built there uh, like our first apps were uh, on Android specifically it was uh, the quality was really poor like how it was implemented if, and we had uh, external contractors uh, doing that and then once we uh, hired engineers internally uh, to build the app then kind of they, they had to rewrite pretty much everything. Uh, so that put, pushed us back a little bit, but at the same time, it allows us to learn the, the problems of our users, not, you know, not to focus just on technical problems. Right? I have a question about scalability. Uh, 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 you talked about uh, a, a bit uh, you talked a bit about uh, perfectionism and uh, wanting to move quickly at the beginning and uh, moving quickly la later on. Uh, if you inhibit your uh, your desire to be perfectionist and uh, move quick, you uh, opt for uh, quick and dirty solutions, and this is uh, create and this creates problems for yourself in the future. And uh, yeah, if you move fast, you introduce a lot of uh, these things, and then when uh, time to scale comes, you in the future pays for what uh, you in the past did. And I'm wondering uh, if you had some particular challenges. Maybe you have advice how to deal with uh, with these things. Yeah, it's a good, very good point. Uh, how, like the. Uh, my, my approach, and then I said as a general like uh, direction for engineering, uh, how to think about this is okay, we always need to be fast, but w and to be able to fast and scale fast, uh, we do it through quality. But w w what it means, it means building quality foundation, building quality stuff that can be replicated. Right. So it's so it's quality and standardization. You need to do something that has quality built in and scale at the same time. Doing focusing on spending, you know, perfecting something that has you know one of use case, that doesn't make any sense, right? So this is, would be the criteria how we decide like the longevity of what you're building. Right? It's uh, you know, uh, it's you can you see parallels in you know in other things as well, you know. Uh, the things that last are the ones that uh, have quality inherently in them, right? Like good wine, I don't know. <laughs> you estimate longevity and then you tune in uh, or out your perfectionist. You, you, uh, if, if, it's, uh, if it's, it has long uh, uh, half-life, then uh, perfectionist. Yeah. Then if it's, uh, if it's something short, just uh, quick and dirty. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Uh, hi, what's your opinion on remote work? And do you have any remote teams at Revolu? Uh, I'll say Revolu is one big remote team. <laughs> it's, it's not, not remote, but uh, distributed. Uh, most of team ended up being distributed. Uh, we try to consolidate now more because we, if we're talking about product, so teams are in one, two, seven offices. Uh, currently, so it has this challenge, and the way it happens, or we would optimize, okay, to to be able to uh, find talent and hire faster, we just need to spread our network. Okay, uh, say London is probably for engineers is not the best place. Uh, there are other locations, so we we'll try to hire there. Like this is how we decided to start uh, open office in Berlin end of last year. Uh, and that naturally creates this problem of distributed teams, but we kind of, from the beginning, uh, from early days, are like this, uh, we adapted our, our processes around that. Are you on different time zones, or uh, like mainly in Europe? So this, uh, this is one of the criteria that we put uh, with expansion into regions outside of Europe, uh, like in, in North America, in, in Asia, Australia, there's this ch uh, challenge of uh, time overlap, uh, and currently settled on approach not to scale teams locally, like on product side specifically, uh, but uh, until we have you know, significant 
the you know, critical mass that requires and the, the team can work in most of the time in uh, you know, autonomously in isolation. Um, but currently we just try to uh, consolidate efforts so it's, this communication happens uh, you know, f more freely without these time constraints uh, and based on this even teams working on you know, products that are specific for those uh, markets that would be in Europe as well. Um, hello, I'm Dunia from Consensus. Thank you so much for this presentation and uh, this event. Uh, my question will be first around um, so the crypto, crypto space. Um, so Revolut has been kind of like really crypto friendly um, and I would like to, to know about your positioning in this ecosystem uh, where we can see like a lot of like new decentralized finance you know, products and I know that uh, so when you are using Revolut for your crypto, you can only hold your crypto, you cannot exchange it. Um, so I'm just wondering what's your position around that and uh, if it, maybe it's for re regulatory reason, um, but we'd like to, to, to know about it. And my second question, if I may. Um, so I really love the design of Revolut and I would like to know what could be, if you could share your kind of like takeaways on how engineers and designers are working within uh, Revolut because I think it's quite a major strength um, on the app. Sure, uh, so the, the, the first question on, on crypto, uh, well, I'll be honest, we, we haven't cracked it, like what, what exactly is the, the thing? Uh, I mean, cause the, whole idea around uh, crypto, initial cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, etc. It's like the whole industry shifted away from it a bit like, because uh, uh, being cr critical about, you know, just human nature made it so that it's in a bit of a mess, uh, in my opinion. Uh, there's no uh, clear direction, you know, shift to exchanges that uh, uh, it's all about quick gains it's a, instead of building infrastructure. Uh, for us, uh, Making decisions in that space uh, specifically is challenging because we are uh, still focusing on problems that exist today, and you know, not that you know, it's, it's not the majority of people who won't just suddenly you know say we don't want to be uh, you know, controlled, we want to be you know independent. Majority of people don't want to be. Majority of people want to you know someone else to solve these problems for them and they can say okay uh, they can blame the you know the company the government or whatever right uh, it's on philosophical level it's unfortunate right <laughs> but this is uh, how it works uh, so we were looking at this uh, how we can use it again to solve more specific problems we have a significant segment of uh, customers who uh, use crypto f for their needs Right, uh, and the way we're looking currently is a bit of a closed ecosystem. We like very, the use is very limited. It's more like what we have now is easy introduction for people who have no clue about, you know, they don't they have to figure out how crypto works, etc. And so the next stage for us is actually to link with uh, with um, public uh, blockchains uh, to facilitate transactions, uh, etc. So this is what we're looking into. And the second question was, uh, remind me, design. Uh, design and engineers, so uh, this is again, very much related to what, what uh, we discussed before about being problem driven. Uh, in early days, uh, there was this patterns I observed when you know, a team, you know, a specific team building something, uh, and then they produce something before that's released. Uh, I would look at it and say, guys, it just doesn't make any sense. I would ask engineers, so why, why is it done this way? And the answer would be sometimes, because the designer drew it this way, so we just did it without questioning. Right? And I was like constantly creating, trying to create this mindset, okay, as an engineer, you have to contribute, you have impact directly. Having impact does mean just coding, it means having opinion, understanding of what, what, how we're solving the, the problem and end to end. What is that user experience? Is it solving? Is it achievable? Designers sometimes because they are not don't understand the uh, again sometimes possibility of the platform. What is possible? How they can be implemented? Can they be experienced uh, 
you know, a lot smoother than they think. Right? So this is where engineers uh, have to come in and contribute to you know end-to-end -end solution. Versus, uh, as, as an example, uh, like with designers, often uh, with less experienced designers, there's a lot of focus on visual, uh, visual interface, and uh, not the you know, but the the best product is the one they, that doesn't require you to actually fiddle with it, right? Is all that interaction is you know happens in a way that uh, uh, you know. It's, Light, light touch, let's say, right? And it's like you don't have to have, uh, you know, this, how, how people say sometimes intuitive, uh, out here in the past, intuitive, it means like everything that I want to do now is there in front of me. And there's another way to think about it. Uh, it just happens when I need it. I don't have to see it and look for it, right? Uh, so again, this is combination with design and engineering. Right? The invisible thing is the engineering, right? Uh, hi. Um, so you spoke earlier about you know the kind of manpower challenges that you have faced at Revolut as you scaled up, and so that sounded a lot to me in terms of uh, organizational management challenges. And you're coming from a more programming background, I, I believe. And you're wearing two hats, a CTO and you're the co-founder, so you have financial backers and investors that you're answerable to. So I, I want to get an idea of how you've personally um, skilled yourself to you know, meet these kind of managerial and uh, financial challenges and discussions, how you've evolved to uh, I deal with daily situations when you come to answering uh, all these kind of problems that are probably outside your comfort zone. Sure, uh, makes sense. Uh, so, in, how how do you approach the you know the, the management organizational problems? Uh, as I mentioned before, I look at it. Uh, people process similar system processes. Like how do you scale systems? Uh, as I mentioned before, it's distribution. You have to distribute so uh, to scale to be able to scale or minimizing the, the problem is complexity, simplifying it so that it's easier to solve, right, if it's something repetitive. Uh, same, same approach here, it's like with uh, distribution, it means delegating to a lot of people to do something, right? Uh, I try to avoid central, centralization, right? So what, centralization uh, is useful around decisions, as like it's a group of people they have to get together to decide something and then implement it in a distributed way, right? Everyone does part to get there, right? Uh, this, this is the approach, uh, like fundamentally. And it applies uh, through our organization. A lot of things actually, how uh, our organization came up in different parts that are not related even to product uh, is through, in engineering, they kind of, we evolved naturally through this, and then we uh, we'll do something and we formalize it uh, as, as as part of standardization. So it's documented; anyone can go. We can sort of explaining to everyone how to do that, uh, and then same approach is then applied quite often across organization. Uh, does it make sense? Does it answer your question. Uh, in our case, uh, I think in investors, uh, it's important to think about. I mean, who, who, who's investor? Investors and why you know you have a relationship with them. Investor, they see someone, they think they found you know, great opportunity. They want to facilitate that financially. So that group of people can get there and then they benefit as well as investors, right? Uh, it's great when investors have the b background in the same space, they can advise, but most of the time, if you are solving a problem that no one solved, most probably they won't have. And especially if they're serial investors, not entrepreneurs, they're not the ones who will have an idea how to solve the problem. So this is uh, an important distinction and this is how we work with investors. Investors are investors. 
they are not, you know, they investors could be good, uh, good useful to build your network uh, connections, you know, maybe some market intelligence because they they look at the markets uh, in wider. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say this is you know, should distinguish like, if the team uh, you know, of entrepreneurs are the ones who know how to build. Investors shouldn't be dictating you know, that. Otherwise, why they're not building it themselves right? if they have resources and know how to do it? Well, first, I want to say I'm a big fan of your product and a big user as well. I have a lot of questions, but really one uh, specifically uh, as a CTO, how do you deal with um, data retention long term when it comes to um, all the information that you have to keep for um, your financial purposes and uh, for regulations? What is your strategy? So the, the the question is about information retention, data retention, da data yeah. retention. Yeah. So uh, data retention specifically, currently, like we are going to stay like this for foreseeable future. Uh, we keep all data uh, versus uh, like, and we're selective in at the beginning uh, about what data we we need to keep and. We define what's temporary, and for this we have expiration policies. Uh, and data that is permanent, most of permanent data is just that we don't have. Like if we're talking about uh, the the core data that we uh, hold, say on let's say, information about our customers and uh, transaction activity, uh, which is going to be our, the main activity of our users, uh, we don't have expiration on that. Uh, currently, uh, at some, we may have that at some point in the future. But so far, it looks like we, I think, we will be able to scale that. And uh, yeah. Well, my the, question was more technical. How do you deal with it technically? Uh, you know, do you? Oh, how do we? Yeah. How do you deal with that? You know, the data retention technically. Uh, do you have uh, your own uh, storage? I think it's a, it's a very complex uh, question. It's, it's too broad because the, first there is data classification, right? You need to classify your data, and then you decide how to deal with specific and technical level, right? But we will have our operational data that is the result of uh, user activity. Then we would have our analytical data that is more aggregated. Uh, we could have, uh, you know. Reporting data, which has different life cycle and is handled in different ways and uh, sometimes different uh, stack. The, uh, the type of access to data, how fast you need to be able to access it, how frequently you would define what tech you use for that, right? If some could be cheap, the cost would come in, could use some cheap storage for something that uh, uh, you, know, you don't need to access frequently. Uh, it's, 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 it's a broad question, I would say. Yeah. We'll, we'll take one more. One last question. I think there was some uh, hands uh, over there. Um, yeah, so my last question is, first of all, for the roles, you mentioned an important point about it's actually about the roles, not just the team. So I would like you to expand on that a little bit and also some tips for apps for workflow of the team, if possible. Thank you. Uh, can you clarify a question on, on oh, the roles? So on the roles, you mentioned earlier that it wasn't about the team and the, the part, uh, that department's team's role, but you mentioned that was specifically about the role of each individual. For me personally, I understood it as one person could sometimes be able to do the role of an entire team, for example, but then I just wanted to ex you to expand on that to see what you meant by that. Uh, yeah, well, I think, yeah, what I said before, the people based on their skill would perform a certain role. Uh, sometimes there will be overlap where uh, besides just the you know pure pure like technical and whatever the, the, the skill is, uh, that's something that's learned. Uh, the skill that uh, th things that require for us to have having ownership. Right? Often it's about attitude. So this is where I meant where an, an engineer st is steps in as a product owner. Uh, this is like most of the you know, transitions happen like in this uh, space going into product ownership or we had we have cases people doing 
PR communication and they go into design because they had some experience before, they know the tools, there was their kind of hobby and there was opportunity internally. So we open for these kind of shifts. If someone willing to, to do something that, uh, you know, we have a role for that, uh, we consider always. I understand. And from running a, the business perspective outside of the engineering and coding part, do you have any suggestions for apps to help the workflow? I mean, I've done some research, so I already use Evernote. I use um, Trello for, um, for management. But then do you have any personal tips from apps that you use to help you? Oh, I, I, I'm very minimalistic in this sense. Uh, like one thing, I, I hate being surrounded with a lot of tools. Like to me, it's like the more productivity tools you use, the less productive you become kind of eventually. Uh, most of the time, I just use uh, notes that instant integrate in our uh, platform. We are we use uh, Google uh, G Suite for for business in general and tools they in Google G Suite. Uh, well, we started using it from early on and kind of. It's we, as we scale it, it, it fit what we do. Uh, you know, all the products that uh, uh, like it's web-based. It makes it easy in terms of you know, managing all that stuff. Uh, and then tools. And I, I personally use as I said, very simple things like and micro was here. Okay, is there a notes tool that is integrating with this? Okay, Google have keep product for this. Super simple allows me to manage my notes. Uh, sometimes. Uh, I would temper notes, would go into uh, sublime, whatever, it's just so I can, because it's easy to type bigger pieces of text, and I'll put them wherever, wherever they need to end up. Uh, but just, yeah, I, I don't have, uh, I'm specific about this. The simpler the tool is my criteria usually. If it's something that I look at it and it takes me time to figure out how it works and it has a million features, like, I don't need to care about all the stuff. Like, I have a problem, like, it solves my problem. Over a longer time, I'll just use it.